Today we're going to build the Flex Ornithopter. It's a unique design that uses flexible materials, which imitates nature. Specifically, it looks like the indirect flapping mechanism used by some insects. This also makes it easy to build. Typical ornithopters use a complicated crank design to synchronize the left and right wings. The part typically made of bent wire can be tricky to build, especially when you're first starting out. The flexible supports allow a simpler crank and that makes it easier to build. These are the materials for the Flex Ornithopter. You can find these at a hobby shop or online. We use balsa wood because it's light and that makes it fly better. This part forms the body of the ornithopter. We're going to drill a hole in it first before we get the other parts together. If you can't find a small bead like this, just use a short section of the brass tube. Make sure the ends are smooth and even. You can use orthodontic wire or music wire. You'll have to buy the special type of rubber that is made for model airplanes. Don't use rubber bands you find around the house. I like to use tissue paper for the wings. If this is your first ornithopter, don't try to use plastic. And finally, you can print this pattern on cardstock for the remaining components. First we're going to make the hooks that hold the rubber band, and this one is the back of the crank piece. We'll do the rest of it later. Now I'm making the hook that holds the back of the rubber band. There's a small piece of wood that supports the crank. Now we'll just glue the tail pieces together. Get it lined up good and then don't try to move this until the glue dries. These are the cardstock pieces that you printed out from the pattern. You will notice that I'm lining these up very carefully. Now we're going to put the brass tube and the metal bead onto the crank wire.
And now you'll see why the flex is a little easier to build than some other ornithopters. The crank should measure about 5 sixteenths center to center. But you want to measure it a little bit less because the wire is not going to end up in the same place as where you put the pliers. Now we're going to glue the wing levers onto the wing assembly. Line up the hole with the little arrow on the cardstock. I'm going to glue the tail in place. You might be concerned about this, but we will be able to adjust the tail later. I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. We'll start off with the tail angled up slightly, maybe about 15 degrees. The crank needs to be glued in place with epoxy since it's metal. Just don't get any glue on the wire. After that epoxy hardens, we're going to reinforce the joint a little with the other cardstock piece. Here I'm just snugging it down a little so it will conform to the surface better and make a stronger joint. Now the ornithopter starts to come together pretty quickly. We're going to carefully curve the cardstock to form the wing supports, fold the wings down, and then we're going to connect the two wing levers with the little metal pin. We'll put the connecting rod on next. And these are some earring backers that will hold everything in place. You don't want tension on the wing tissue, but you don't want it slack either.
Let's put a little extra glue here. Those five inch balsa wood sticks should be about parallel with each other. The strip of rubber is 18 inches long and tie it like this so it doesn't come untied. You have to lubricate the rubber band. I'm using castor oil here, but a lot of people use armor all for this. And we're going to double the rubber band as we hook it onto the model. You should turn the crank about 50 times to wind it up for your first test flight. And count, because a lot of people don't wind it enough and then it won't fly. After you make some adjustments that I'll talk about in just a minute, you can wind it 150, 200 times. This flight was 34 seconds, which is typical for a beginner ornithopter. If you want to adjust the tail up or down, Put a drop of water all around the glue joint, let it sit for a few minutes, you'll see the glue turns white, and then you'll be able to adjust it up and down gently. If the ornithopter is always turning to one side, you can add a little weight to the opposite wingtip and that will help it fly a little straighter. Adjust the amount of weight as needed. But if it's always getting stuck in a turn and it won't gain any altitude, you may need to shorten the connecting rod just by making a new hole. That gives it more dihedral. Probably by now you're wondering, can we build an electric ornithopter the same way? Well, most electric ornithopters have the same problem. They need two separate cranks to flap the wings at the same time. Maybe using a flexible structure, you can simplify that so you only need one crank. If you decide to give it a try, get in touch with me. Maybe we can do a follow-up video on the channel. Some other new things. I have some new RC Ornithopter videos coming up, so go ahead and click that subscribe button down there so you don't miss those.